Hey everybody, welcome to the Business of Psychotherapy. I'm your host, Brian Kang. It has been a while since I've published a new interview, uh, and this interview is actually recorded in April of 2017, so it's been a couple of years, um, with Brendan McClenahan, who is the co-owner of Coupla Media. And I've been, as you may already realize, I've been focusing on other projects, and uh, I wouldn't say neglecting the podcast, but this it's just been a long time coming for a new podcast interview. And Brendan, I reached out to him recently, and he was gracious enough to say, even though I had uh, procrastinated or I lost focus focus on the podcast that, hey, he was open to me uh, publishing our interview that took place a couple of years ago. And it's a great interview. We talk about uh, some topics such as how a video can help your website click through to call to action rate, how to make the prospective client the hero rather than you as the hero, as a therapist, how to use story to draw potential clients to your private practice, and how to identify your ideal client. Uh, Brendan could be found at CouplaMedia.com, which is C-U-P-L-A Media.com. And he's also started a new project called uh, PracticeShorts.com in which it is a, uh, the, it's a, it's a company that's uh, taking the headache out of video marketing. And so it's a place where you can go to PracticeShorts.com. You can choose the video. You can download and customize it and publish it so that you can get more uh, more people, more click-throughs to your website, etc. And we'll talk a little bit more about the power of video um, during this interview. Uh, this interview is also brought to you by TherapistAdmin.com. This is uh, our company, my company, that is helping uh, psychotherapists complete their admin tasks so that they can spend time doing the things that matter most to them. Some of the things that we specialize in is helping with phone scheduling and intake for new clients, uh, helping with insurance billing and claims. So a lot of the things that perhaps you're a, a solo entrepreneur, private practice owner, as many are, and you can't really hire even a part-time admin. We have uh, on-demand packages in which you only pay for the hours and time that you use for specific tasks. You can check us out at therapistadmin.com and go from there. So without further ado, here is the interview with Brendan McClenahan. Today's guest is Brendan McClenahan, who is the founder of Coupla Media, a business that helps therapists make videos that grow their practices and connect with ideal clients. Brendan is originally from Southern California, but now lives in Grand Haven, Michigan with his wife, Rachel, and daughter, Jane. How's it going, Brendan? It's going great. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate you taking time out to uh, to speak with our audience and uh, talk about all the great things you guys are doing at Coupla Media, helping therapists. So excited! Yeah, this is this is awesome. So glad that we get to be, get to be a part of this. Absolutely. So, I mean, let's let's kind of dive straight in. Um, how did uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Coupla Media and how it it how it was formed and what the story is behind that? Yeah. So. Um you know, last year we launched Coupla Media. It's a really recent thing. I started with my brother, who is a therapist in Los Angeles, and he was experimenting because he was trying to grow his practice. He had been uh, in practice for a couple of years and was just really frustrated because he was not growing at the rate that he needed to in order to sustain himself, um, not only as a psychologist with student loan debt, et cetera, mm. but also as a dad and um, as um, a husband and wanting to you know, help his family. So um, I'm really close with my brother and I love him a lot. And so we would talk about this kind of stuff all the time. Like how is he going to grow his practice to that level where he's going from that, you know, five, 10 clients a month to, you know, 15, 20 clients a month, which is what he needed. And so we were trying to figure out what to do and, um, we have like my brother and I used to make videos when we were kids. And so, um, he started to think differently about it. Once, once we, uh, kind of made a connection, he thought, I wonder if, you know, if I made a video because he's, I spend, he's, he spends like so much time blogging and trying to, you know, tweak his online profile and figure out how he's going to, you know, reach out to that stranger out, you know, on online. Cause it feels like everyone online is just these, these faceless people that you're trying to reach out to and he's a faceless person too to them and and he's tr- constantly trying to to offer a vision of himself that is real and compelling and provides people with a uh, you know a clear picture of who he is and what he can do to help and it's he found it almost impossible to really create that relationship with people through text and picture and he's like if only i could just sit down in front of them and 
and talk to them face to face. He's like, what if I just, what if I made a video, you know? And he tried it and it went, went so well for him. And it also, um, he started doing it for, he was part of a group practice. He started doing it for his other um, colleagues and uh, doing short one minute videos where um, we really practice the art of um, storytelling and trying to help them connect empathetically with their ideal client and um, talk to them as if they're sitting with them in their first session almost so that people can get a really clear picture. Because I think a lot of people, when they're searching for a therapist, immediately hit that roadblock. And um, I think as therapists, we don't realize kind of the the enemy we're up against, you know, of of these people who are so desperately trying to get our help and yet can't get it because they don't trust us, you know, and that's not our fault. It's not their fault, but how can we build a bridge? So they started doing that. And my brother, um, started making more and more videos and was just honestly just swamped between working as a therapist and then now making videos. He, he was having a hard time staying on top of stuff. So, um, I was like, well, I would love to help you, Connor. So I started editing the videos and, um, we started to get more attention and we thought, mm-hmm. you know, we, we should really, you know, uh, start, you know, doing this for more people because wouldn't it be awesome if, if not only these individual therapists now had videos on their websites that were doing great for their practices, but how would this change our communities if everybody who was seeking a therapist, instead of just having to act on blind faith that this is going to be somebody that's good for them. Just like you go to a, a, a car lot and expect that you can, you know, go you know, test drive a car before you drive it, you know, before you buy it. Wouldn't it be awesome if people who were seeking a therapist knew that they could, in essence, meet their therapist before their first session over video mm. and know that that was the right therapist for them. What if that was the, the linchpin that could really, you know, unlock a lot of people being able to see therapists who otherwise would never have done it, taken the risk. So, um, that's really our, our mission. That's like our vision ahead of us. And, Mm -hmm. and, uh, we, we believe that video can help therapists get there so that they can change communities and get over that obstacle of trust that keeps so many people from, Mm -hmm. from seeking and getting help. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Um, what What were the results that your brother? Your brother's Connor, right? He's the co founder yeah. of Google, and he's also your identical twin, right? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Identical twins. Yep. Right on. So, what were the results that uh, Connor uh, got from his practice through doing video? And then, can you tell yeah. us a little bit about the results that the group practice received as well? Yeah. So um, the the results of the group practice have been hard to track because those are our original videos, and we didn't, you know, do any kind of um, you know, tracking when we were first starting off. So we don't know what they started off with. And we were actually now working on, okay, we need to follow up with those people and find out how their videos are doing and what we can do to make them even better. Um, But I know for my brother, um, what he's been doing, I mean, we're constantly, you know, testing and um, experimenting on this kind of stuff. So when he first started off, he did a video and he's put it on his webpage and it was like, that was fine. But he, um, he actually ended up doing a, f- a Facebook ad mm. for his uh, website. And he, within that month, he got 10 new clients wow. that month. Wow. So that was huge. I want to give a caveat that we, not, we are not sure, and it's really hard to tell how many of those people came from the video and how many people did not come from the video, sure. you know, from his other marketing efforts. So it's hard to parse that out because everyone's going to go to a web page before they see a therapist, and we're not sure what actually made the difference. But we can tell from studies, I'll give you two concrete things. We can tell you from studies that um, if you go to a website and um, there is a video, you are 64% more likely to click through and respond to a call to action. That's one thing I can tell you. Um, Another, and there's all kinds of studies on this. You can do your own research. Um, they're all overwhelmingly positive, like out of the park, way above what any other, many other marketing efforts will do for you. Um, another, uh, statistic I can say, and this is more from our internal like research on this, as we've been kind of perfecting, um, our, how we do this, 
um, how we do video marketing. My brother has been getting better and better at it. Um, and he did no ad campaigns. He just did the way he did his, uh, he's been doing content videos and he'll do like a, like a three minute, uh, content video on, let's say couples therapy. Mm -hmm. And then he'll do a 15 second introduction, put that on Facebook. And he got like 1500 views with no advertising just by asking friends to share. Mm -hmm. And he said he went, um, he was at a, like a banquet or something. And someone came up to him and was like, I saw your video. Like you're the guy, you know, like I want to talk to you about, you know, cause I would love to point people your way. And, um, so just the visibility that you get and people feel like they already know you. That's the best, that's the best result that you can get from a video is that when people come to your page, they click on your video, they watch and they feel like I know this person. So within like 12 hours of Connor putting out that video, he got like one new client Mm. and you go, okay, that's one new client. But you figure, you know, whatever the investment was in the video, you've got a client who's now coming for probably an average of 16 sessions total, who's paying a hundred dollars a session. You know, that's $1,600 right there just from that one client within 12 hours of making the video. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, so that's, that's part of the impact, but I think you have to kind of think of a, on a bigger scale than that. The bigger question than how many clients am I going to get from my video, which is an important question. If you, if you're figuring out if it's going to be worth it for you, for most people, it pays off. It pays itself, you know, doing a video within a month or two, Mm -hmm. which is crazy. But you have to expand your vision a little bit and go, you know what? This is not necessarily about how many clients I get. This is about the question of how am I interacting with my community? And you go, okay, how am I putting myself out there as a therapist and not expecting people to just come to see me? But how am I going to serve them and change my posture so that I am making myself available to people who would otherwise not seek and find a therapist. So what are you like going to networking events? You know, like, are you going to like chamber of commerce stuff? Are you like, you know, meeting new people? And do you have like your pitch down where you know that you can tell people what you do and how you can help them? Like most people are trying to do that stuff and it's, it's doing good for them. And it's also, you know, not enough. And they have this online profile that's just sitting there. They're spending money on every single month, like $30 a month or whatever for psychology today or whatever subscription thing. And how are you stewarding that space? Well, to posture yourself so that you are taking the first step towards your client with empathy and understanding. So that's, I mean, those are some, I mean, that that was a long answer to a really simple question, but so it has a huge returns for your practice, but even more than that, it changes your posture of how you are presenting yourself to new people so that you can serve them. Well, it makes complete sense that you, there are results through video and, and larger calls to action, like clicking through or uh, setting up a consultation with a therapist uh, because you, you touched upon it earlier, but it's all about storytelling, like why this person's a therapist, who they want to help. Uh, people connect to stories. Uh, compared to yes. just facts, if it's a bullet point, hey, I went to this college, I got this degree, I have this EMDR specialty, I focus on you know addictions. Um, that's all great, you know, and those are things that you can share later. But the way that people connect and build that trust is a lot through stories. So, um, yeah. Brandon, and I appreciate you sharing about how you got into Kupla Media, you and your brother Connor, because that um, just sharing that story of wh- how you got into the space. I mean, you want to you you want these therapists to have more clients because it sounds like it's a deeper impact for the community of, as a whole. Um, for yes. people coming to therapy and so i think starting to think about it from hey you're not just a therapist this is what's your story behind your um your practice and why you became a therapist and that's how people connect through that video totally yeah storytelling there's a million different ways to look at it but storytelling is humongous Mm -hmm. um not only as a therapist are you helping other people tell their stories so when people come in to your to their sessions you're helping them stitch together their story and that's healing. There's something healing about that. But even before people come in to your sessions, um, story is something that we're drawn to, you know, and as therapists, you're perfectly, um, suited and, and set up to be able to, to connect with people through story. You know, you understand 
like the emotional world and you get it. You get what people are feeling. So to be able to use a story rather than facts is going to be huge. And to make your client the hero of that story and not you as a therapist. I think that's what a lot of therapists do is they they um, talk about themselves like, here's my journey as a therapist. I went to this school. I went to this you know, certification. I, I have this licensure. I have these qualifications. Um, these are my specialties. These are the people I serve. And it starts to sound like it's all about the therapist. And honestly, people just are repelled by that. You know, They want to know that when they come in for their sessions that you're paying attention to their story. Mm-hmm. And so how can you position yourself in all your marketing efforts, especially video, so that, um, so that you're featuring the story of your client? So that you're saying, instead of, you know, like on video, most people will go on their video and, and be like, yeah, I'm a, uh, I'm a therapist. I work with um, this demographic. I've been in therapy for this long. I have this certification, whatever. And people are so tuned out. But to be able to go, hey, you know what? You maybe had a hard time getting up this morning. And it's been like that for weeks. And you don't know what's going on. And you wonder if you have depression. But you're not sure. And you're afraid to come in and see someone because it says something about your condition that you would have to go, you know, you start telling them their story and they're like, Oh my gosh, this person gets me. They understand me. They want to like, they can help me. And that's what you're doing through video. That's what you're doing through, but it's helping to change your whole posture as a therapist to see yourself as a guide who is going to help other people. The other thing that story does is as opposed to, um, facts, which you were kind of drawing a delineation between. Um, facts are closed loop, we call that, where this is a, a, a stagnant and static figure. Um, a story creates an open loop, which means when you say once upon a time, uh, automatically th- there's a question mark at the end of that. What's going to happen? You know, How is this going to get resolved? And there's interest. Um, so facts are just kind of like, this is the fact, no questions. When you begin to tell someone's story, they begin to enter in to what you're saying and there's, they're totally interested. Okay. Um, and then the other part of story is it forms identity. And I think as you tell the story of your clients, they're getting a clear sense of who you are and who you help and who you don't help. And, um, that's who you don't help is just as important as who you do help as, a, as someone who's marketing themselves. And if you can tell really succinctly the story of your client and how you help them, um, you're giving um, you're giving potential clients a really clear message and a really clear pathway that if this is who you are, this is the journey that you're going to go on, and um, people are drawn to clarity over confusion, and so it helps them form a sense of your identity, a sense of their identity, and a create better understanding. So. Um, yeah, those are some of my thoughts on storytelling. And so when we, when we do videos with people, um, you know, making a video is not that difficult. I mean, there's a certain level of competence that we have to make really good looking videos uh, for therapists because that's important to us. Most of our work though, is trying to help the therapist really clearly identify and communicate their story so that, um, the video connects with ideal clients and that's really the hard work of what we do and the hard work that therapists sign up for when they do a video with us is is really doing the hard work of going okay who is my client and what journey are they on and how do i help them and how do i communicate that to them succinctly so yeah I think yeah you brought up a great point that therapists do have tons of empathy and compassion. You know, most yeah. therapists out there, that's why they get into the industry. Um, yet a lot of times their messaging of their marketing is about, you know, their certifications, what they, who mm-hmm. they are, which is great. You could, those are things that you can share later, but I love what you said about connecting right away to that ideal client and what are they struggling with? So what are some things that we can do to use? What are some things that therapists can do to start to use their skills of empathy and compassion to mm-hmm. be able to figure out who their ideal client is and how to connect with them immediately, whether it's through yeah. Video or marketing, etc. 
Yeah. First of all, um, we developed a free resource for therapists who had that question. It's, um, it's our ebook mm -hmm. and, um, it's a therapist guide to video marketing. And you can find that at cuplamedia.com slash ebook, C U P L A.com slash ebook. If you can put that in the notes or whatever, Absolutely, yeah. um, that would be helpful. Yes. Um, totally free. And it's five chapters and it's basically, it walks you through, um, the whole process, everything you need to know over video marketing. But the second chapter, I believe talks about identifying your ideal client. Mm -hmm. And we have a step-by-step, -step, um, process that we bring people through of how to identify your ideal client, but I'll walk you through. Um, so if you're listening to this now, download that now, I'm going to walk you through that exercise, um, because it's been really transformative for people. Um, people will call me up and simply just to talk through this and they come in confused and they leave like, you know, totally clear and ecstatic about it. So here's, here's how to identify your ideal client. Basically, instead of thinking of your ideal client as something out in the future, um, in a demographic, I want you to think about three of your favorite clients, the people that you come home from work and you wish you could break HIPAA so that you could just tell people this is happening and I can't believe this is happening with my clients. These are the people that you want to bring to mind. Okay. And, and kind of even just write their names out. And then of those, of those three people circle one and just really focus on that one favorite client. And then what I'd like you to do is, walk, pretend they're leaving your therapy session and walk with them out to the car or back home, walk with them back to their work, to their families, and just journal about that. You've already, you already do the work as a therapist of, of really identifying their emotions. And so just run with it, you know, just really unpack it. This is even just good work for you as a therapist, but really identify your ideal client and walk with them and ask yourself, what do they want in their life? What are they desiring? What are they seeking after in their life? And write that down. Mm -hmm. And then write down, what are the obstacles that are standing in their way? Um, what, um, what pain points do they have? What do they uh, vent about to their, to their closest friends? What are they bothered by? Um, what are the things that they wish were not part of their lives? Um, and get to the deep pain and, and how they would describe it. You know, maybe as a, a therapist, you would have some kind of um, diagnosis for that person. Um, but how would they describe their pain? Um, like, you know, my parent keeps calling, no, my, um, my principal keeps calling cause my son is, you know, is acting up again in school. Or like I said before, I, I can't get out of bed in the morning. I don't know what's wrong with me. I can't get out of bed. Start at that um, symptom level problem. Like what can you actually point to in their lives that's wrong, that they're having trouble with, that they would phrase in their own words. And I think if you just even go there, if you even just stop right there, I think you are miles ahead of anywhere you would get if you would try to get anywhere else with it. You know, like if you try to use any other way to get at your ideal client, um, I don't think you get nearly as far as if you picked a real client that you have your favorite client and find out exactly what bugs them, you know, what's standing in the way of their dreams and goals for their life. Um, but if you can do that, um, I think you're, you're on your way to, to figuring out how to connect with my ideal client. So that's one first thing I, that we try to do with all of our, um, all of our clients who come to us is try to really be clear about your ideal client. So from there you can, that's the beginning of your script. You could spend 80% of your video or your marketing material simply just talking about the desires of your client and the problem that they have. Um, there's a few other steps to creating a really full, you know, a full bodied script that we walk people through, but that's the meat of it. So, um, I highly recommend if you haven't done an exercise like that, do that. And then you can pare it down to even your tagline, you know, of let's say, um, I don't know, maybe your tagline right now is like, uh, psychotherapy in 
you know, Joesville, United States or whatever. Um, instead you can take that empathy that you've developed for your ideal client and create that into a tagline. So, um, helping people, helping, uh, men with depression, uh, experience joy, you know, something like that. I just made that up on the spot, yeah, yeah. Only did that <laughs> one. but, um, helping blank do what and, or overcome what. And, um, one step can be just creating a tagline out of that. So, yeah, I mean, those are a couple of things. I mean, there's a lot of other things too, but, um, yeah, identifying your ideal client is huge. Yeah. So absolutely. And you can use that not only in the video, I'm sure that you help that you shoot for psychotherapists using that ideal client. It sounds like you help with the script and then the shooting and all that. Um, but also those are things that you can utilize in your psychology today profile, like the text you put in there, your good therapy.org, your Theravive, wherever you're listening Mm -hmm. to the online profiles. And just like, uh, Brendan said, also in your tagline for your branding. And these are things to start thinking about, like, what is, what is my client thinking, like feeling? I love what you said about the pain points. Like, what makes them alive? What makes them not feel alive? What's holding mm-hmm. them back? And focusing on that one. I love that. That one. Yeah. Um, you know, that some people call it the client avatar as well. Um, some businesses out there have books and thick books about their client avatar, like that one yeah. person. They like have their neighbor and what they so they go deep into what the person's thinking. Like they take it, they go very complex with it. And so yeah. starting to shift your mind into, hey, who are the people that make you feel alive? And that's a really great way to look at it. So yeah, we'll drop those in the show notes and we'll share that uh, link again at the end of the show. Um so talk to us a little bit about um as we kind of close here, talk to us a little bit about how you um you help uh, psychotherapists and how people can uh, connect with you in terms of the video. Yeah, a lot of people who are wanting to take a next step, um, there. I think the first step is just setting up a phone call with us. Mm-hmm. We um, we help video. We help therapists connect to ideal clients through video. So we can come out and make a profile video for your website and help increase it to that sixty four percent growth. Um, and we'll help you write the script, film it, edit it, help you post it online for maximum impact. Um, for people who aren't ready to take that step, uh, maybe that's too big of a step for you. We have, um, we offer coaching, uh, just like, you know, helping you run through your ideal client so that you can have a really clear message. Mm -hmm. And then we also give you, um, help finding out how to do your own video marketing, um, how to set up the, what kind of equipment you need, um, how to edit video, how to post online. We have a lot of, um, strategy that we've developed for how to get maximum impact out of your, um, social media campaigns through video, Mm -hmm. um, that we can share with you and coach you on and, um, even help you manage your projects, those kind of things. Um, and we've seen some really cool results, results with that. Um, and then lastly, I'll just say, just download our, our free ebook, you know, um, that's a way that we can help you wherever you're at, um, you know, take the next step forward in your practice so you can grow. I think video marketing is the future, not only the internet, but of therapists as people continue to get sucked into their online worlds, um, to be able to have, uh, a face that empathizes and that understands that people can connect to. So that's kind of what we're shooting for. So, um, anything we can do to help, help you guys move in that direction. So yeah, just seeking to help however we can. So set up a phone call with us. We'd love to talk. Thank you so much, Brendan. Appreciate your time yeah, and your Brian, knowledge. It's been awesome. Yeah. Thank absolutely. you. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you again to Brendan for that great interview. You can check out his website at Coupla, C U P L A Media.com. Download the free ebook at CouplaMedia.com slash ebook and also check out practiceshorts.com. If you want to help with your administrative tasks for your private practice, head on over to therapistadmin.com and we can, you can set up a call there to see if it's a right fit for you, uh, completing admin tasks for therapists and helping to save time so that you can spend time doing the things that matter most to you is our main goal with therapist admin. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, feedback, feel free to email, email me directly at Brian, B-R-I-A-N at therapistadmin.com. Thanks so much for tuning in. Talk to you next time.